Warren Beatty, a name that resonates with Hollywood glamour, fame, and a notorious reputation for being a ladies' man. Born in 1937, Beatty embarked on an illustrious career in the film industry that spanned six decades, earning him recognition as an actor, director, and producer. But his professional achievements were often overshadowed by his personal life, particularly his relationships with women. As we delve into the details of Beatty's love life, we'll uncover a story that's as fascinating as it is complex. The Playboy of Hollywood Warren Beatty's reputation as a Hollywood playboy was as legendary as his film career. His romantic liaisons were a hot topic of discussion, often overshadowing his professional accomplishments. Beatty was linked to a plethora of Hollywood's most glamorous women, from actresses to singers, each relationship adding to his image as the ultimate ladies' man. The list of his alleged lovers reads like a who's who of Hollywood's elite. Natalie Wood, Julie Christie, Barbara Streisand, Carly Simon, Stephanie Seymour, Janice Dickinson, and Madonna are just a few of the famous names associated with Beatty. His charm and good looks, coupled with his status as a successful actor, made him irresistible to many women. But it wasn't just the quantity of his relationships that made headlines, but the quality of his lovers. He was known for relationships with some of the most talented and beautiful women in the industry. In 2010, unauthorized biographer Peter Biskind dropped a bombshell that took the rumors about Beatty's love life to a new level. In his book, Star, How Warren Beatty Seduced America, Biskind estimated that Beatty had bedded nearly 13,000 women during his career. That figure, which equates to a new woman every day for over 35 years, was met with disbelief and amusement, both by the public and Beatty himself. Beatty addressed these claims in an interview with AARP, the magazine, responding with a dose of simple math and humor. He remarked that one should consider the idea with sleeping with 12,775 people. He pointed out that such a number would imply not only multiple encounters per day, but also a complete absence of repetition. His response highlighted the absurdity of the claim, while also subtly reminding people of his relationship for being a serial monogamist, known for having long-term relationships with many of his lovers. Despite the skepticism surrounding the 13,000 women rumor, it's become an integral part of Beatty's image as a Hollywood playboy. Famous Relationships Warren Beatty's romantic history is a tapestry woven with the threads of high-profile relationships. One of his earliest and most famous was with actress Joan Collins. The two were a glamorous couple, often seen attending parties and events together. Collins, who later gained fame for her role in Dynasty, was one of the first to experience Beatty's charm and charisma. But their relationship wasn't meant to last, and they eventually parted ways. Beatty's relationship with Natalie Wood, his co-star in the film Splendor in the Grass, was another significant chapter in his romantic history. Their chemistry on screen spilled over into real life, and they became one of the most talked about couples in Hollywood. But their relationship ended tragically with Wood's untimely death in 1981. Beatty's romantic escapades also included a relationship with legendary singer and actress Barbara Streisand. Their relationship, though brief, was a media sensation. Perhaps one of his most famous relationships was with pop icon Madonna. The two met while working on the film Dick Tracy, in which Beatty starred and Madonna provided the soundtrack. Their relationship was a media frenzy, with Madonna's fame bringing a new level of attention to Beatty's love life. But the relationship was short-lived. His romantic history also includes relationships with other famous women, including Carly Simon, who is rumored to have written her hit You're So Vain about Beatty, and Janice Dickinson, one of the most successful models of her time. While many would agree that Beatty is quite legendary with the ladies, some of his past lovers would beg to differ. Many of them have shared their experiences, and these accounts provide a unique insight into Beatty's personality and his reputation as a lover. Joan Collins had a surprising revelation about her time with Beatty. Despite his reputation as a Lothario, Collins described Beatty as a total bore in the bedroom. She's not the only one who's expressed disappointment with his performance. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis also rated his sexual skills as mediocre, saying, quote, Oh, he's fine. Men can only do so much anyway. Despite these less than flattering accounts, Beatty has always maintained a sense of humor about his past. 
The Turning Point Warren Beatty's life took a dramatic turn in 1990 when he met Annette Bening. The notorious playboy known for his high-profile relationships was about to embark on a new chapter that would challenge his playboy image. Beatty first met Benning while casting for his mafia drama Bugsy. He was in search of a leading lady to play Virginia Hill, the girlfriend of gangster Bugsy Siegel. Beatty had heard good things about Benning and had tried to meet with her for his film Dick Tracy, but the two could never get together. Finally, in November 1990, he invited her to lunch at an L.A. restaurant, Santo Pietro. Benning's agent warned her not to take the meeting because he feared Beatty would hit on her. His fears were not unfounded. After their lunch and a short walk, Beatty returned to his office and contacted Bugsy director Barry Levinson. He announced that he loved her and intended to marry her. For Beatty, it was love at first sight. Despite his reputation as a womanizer, he was ready to leave his single life behind for Benning. He later reflected that it took approximately 10 minutes, or perhaps even just five, to fall in love with her. He also described feeling a mix of elation upon meeting her, while also experiencing a sense of mourning for the passing of a way of life. Banning, on the other hand, was well aware of Beatty's reputation. She was attracted to him because he was smart and fun and interesting. After a lifetime of dating starlets, Beatty may have been drawn to Benning for her normalcy. She dressed down and wasn't interested in L.A. hotspots. According to Benning's mother, Warren was captivated by her because she didn't act like an actress. The relationship remained platonic during the filming of Bugsy, but it took a romantic turn just before the movie wraps. Beatty invited Benning back to his house for dessert after a dinner. As they enjoyed ice cream in his kitchen, Beatty asked if she wanted kids. She said she did, and the two got started right then. In January of 1992, they welcomed their first child, Kathleen. Two months later, they were married in a small ceremony. They went on to have three more children. Life after the Playboy era Life after that point was a stark contrast to Warren's Playboy era. He had now settled into a quiet, more domesticated life. His marriage to Annette and the birth of their four children marked a significant shift in his priorities. Beatty, who had once been the center of numerous romantic rumors and high-profile relationships, was now leading a life largely out of the public eye. In the years following his marriage, Beatty's career took a backseat to family life. He semi-retired after the disastrous performance of his 2001 film Town and Country, choosing to focus on family instead. But Benning continued to work regularly, appearing in films like The Kids Are All Right and Girl Most Likely. As for regrets, Beatty appears to have few. His transformation from Hollywood's most notorious playboy to a devoted husband and father seems to have brought him a sense of peace and fulfillment that his previous lifestyle could not. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Warren Beatty role? Let us know in the comments section below.